speaker is Dalton Hermes. As owner and CEO of Hermes Landscaping, Dalton Hermes leads one of the city's largest and most respected landscape contracting firms. Hermes, along with its team members, are passionate about creating spaces through the innovation of landscaping that reconnect, that, that reconnect people with themselves, each other, and nature. The mission of the Hermes company is to create beautiful connections. Hermes Landscaping has been included in the top 100 landscaping, maintenance, irrigation, and snow removal companies nationwide. Dalton undoubtedly finds his greatest passion in his role as husband and father. He has been married to Christine, who is here today. Where's Christine? There you are. He has been married to Christine since 1985, and together they have five beautiful children who bring purpose and joy to their lives. Dalton is grateful to have served on numerous boards, foundations, and committees. He serves on our JCCC Horticultural Sciences Board as well. Outside of family, work, and politics, his interests lie in the areas of music, tennis, yoga, and spiritual growth. His heroes include Ronald Reagan, Walt Disney, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Mahatma Gandhi, each of whom has inspired his own achievements and goals with their vision, wit, risk-taking, and ability to stay true to their passions and dreams. Today, Dalton will talk about the future opportunities and direction of the green industry in Kansas and Missouri. Thank you, Dalton. Good morning. I'm not sure um, who supplies that introduction, but it was more lengthy than it needed to be, so I'm going to make a note to simplify that next year. It's nice to be with you. By show of hands, um, can I can, a show of hands of anybody in the room who is not um, a member of this horticulture industry, who, who isn't, doesn't have a career? Is there anybody that's not here? So take a look at all these people, because because I'm here today to talk to, I'm, I'm here on a recruiting mission to talk to these people, not for our company, but just for our industry. And I really want to talk about what a great industry we're in and, um, and what some of the opportunities are in this industry going forward. And, 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 and if you're able, those of you who are in the industry, to take any part of what I'm sharing today and use that in schools and high schools and colleges and in your circles, in your social media, to co communicate the opportunities that we have in this industry, you would do all, all of us a, a grand favor. So I had the great fortune of being, well, actually I wasn't born into the family, but my father started this company when I was five. And by the time I was six years old, I was working in it full time uh, in the summer. And I can remember him leaving when I was six years old at the summertime and, I, and maybe I got up late and he had already left the office and I would sit on the stairs and cry because I, had, I, I, I missed my ride to work. And so, I, so I, I had a dad that was a landscaper. My mother's family were florists and I thought as a kid I'd won the lottery. It was just, there's not anything that I would rather have been doing as a child than being um, participating in those two areas and, and all the beauty that nature has and the way we get to work with it. So. Um, that's what I'm here to share with you today, and s some of what, having been in this industry, is, um, I don't know, for, for, you know, now, now run the company full time for almost 30 years, and uh, um, kind of progressive revelation, or, you know, every year get a little new understanding of what the industry is and where the opportunities are, and so I'm here to share that with you. So historically, um, this business has been about building something beautiful for viewing, for utility, and for architecture. Examples, landscape, you know, by definition is something we look at, but you can sit in your house and look out the back door at something beautiful, or you can drive up to your home and see something beautiful that's attractive, inviting. It could be about utility and, and rain gardens and BMP areas and stormwater, stormwater retention, erosion control is a lot of what we have opportunity to do historically. And, and in the world of architecture, the landscape architecture can be an extension of that. So it usually begins with something that's hardscape, a building or a sidewalk or a patio, and then how we, make, we soften it with the landscape. That um, sprint building actually is one of the buildings that we did. And I will, I'll just add that, so ha we've 
you know, started this company in 1965. Last year we celebrated 50 years in business. One of the real gifts that I have in this business is to drive around the city, um, and there's probably not more than a quarter mile that I can drive and not see some place where we've been, where we've left a mark of something that's beautiful. So on this campus we've done work, the, the, the office building on, this, on the northeast corner, we landscaped it when it was built. Sprint Center, the Kansas Speedway, the KCI Airport, World's of Fun, Oak Park Mall, uh, the Sporting KC, Royal Stadium. I mean, we've just been a lot of places. It's been fun and, and, and like wine, these landscapes get better with time. And they're really um, something very gratifying about that. In the future, I think our industry will build, build something beautiful for well-being, for connection, for sustainability, and for experience. So well-being, many, many opportunities for people to find that in nature. And that, the picture there with the uh, person walking barefoot on the grass, this might be something if you're not familiar with, you'd want to Google, but there's a, a concept that's called earthing, and it's about taking off our shoes and actually touching the earth because the, you know, Mother Earth and all the oceans are negatively charged. And our bodies and what we breathe and what we eat and the toxins we take in and the stress that we live under build these positive charges which are, um, you know, create the, create the free radicals and create, you know, the, the precursor to diseases and so forth. And one of the most healthy things that we can do as human beings is take our shoes off and touch that ground and it, 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 um, it converts the charge from a positive to a, to a negative and it can do it very, very quickly. And one of the things that has been, um, you read the earthing material, one of the things that's contributed to a lot of um, illness is rubber-soled shoes because they insulate us from connecting with the earth. Connection, the things that we can, the spaces that we can create in landscape for family, for activity, sustainability, it was talked about earlier, the things that we can do to support other forms of life and creating experiences. So whether it's growing watermelon in a garden to teach children the miracle of life and to, to, to uh, eat out of it or to, to create experiences with family and extended family. So, the, so, so what we do in this industry um, ultimately is we work the the, the, the soil and the seed is what we get to work with, and the sunshine and the rain. And with that, we design and build landscapes, which we believe, which is to produce, experience, create experiences, set the stage for people to have experiences, which we believe changes people's lives. So here's some opportunities on how you can be a part of this movement. What comes to mind when you think about horticulture and landscaping, trees and flowers, and that can be the production of trees and flowers, that can be the planting of trees and flowers, that can be the maintenance of trees and flowers. Design can be landscape architecture, which most landscape architecture programs come through the School of Architecture, and, and they're, they're um, uh, I would say, more, more design-based. And then the other, the other discipline is landscape design, which comes through the horticulture schools, which is generally in the College of Agriculture, which is a more, a plant, more of a plant-focused design degree. Construction, which could be hardscape, it could be landscape, it could be irrigation. So it is also a creative industry, innovative, caring, environmentally, environmentally responsible. Here, here's how big we are. So you get the music, you get the NFL, you get the movies. And, and I, you know, in the last number of years, the, our industry continues to grow at a 10 to 15% a year clip. So it's, uh, it really wasn't very long ago, it was 50 billion. Seems like a few years ago. Careers. If you're an art, if you're a creative art type person, there's landscape designer, landscape architect. If you're interested in business, there's management, accounting, planning, finance estimating. If you're a technology person, the automation, the CAD, the tablet use, and the, um, so many applications for that in the field that we're developing. If you're a people person, you like sales and customer service, leadership, 
you're an operations person and you like equipment and planning and crews and schedule, safety, if you're a plant person, a horticulture person, you like plant health and turf health and um, tree and shrub health. So uh, this is about unplugging from technology and te technology and plugging into the environment. It's taking care of the earth that nourishes our bodies. It's spending more time with those that we love. And it's making a difference. So we've got, um, we've got a number of employers that are out today that are recruiting. And it's a small sampling of all the employers in the city that would love to um, recruit and bring people into the industry. And better, much better for all of us than to recruit from each other is to attract new people in. So I, it was mentioned that I have five children. Now, I don't think, and the oldest is 28, but in those you know, 28 years, I don't think there's been a time that any of them had a friend over to the house that I wasn't recruiting their friend to <laughs> horticulture. Like, what are you going to study in college? And I said, have you thought about horticulture? So, yeah, and, and feel, feel free, there's my contact information to contact me at all if you have questions uh, about what I presented. I want to share something with you here at the end and not, um, and, and this applies to people um, that, are, that are in the industry and out of the industry, but what we do, what we do in nature and what nature does for us has um, implications and um, oh, um, inspiration well beyond what we do in this industry. And so I want to indulge me. Let me read this to you. It says, when you go out into the woods and you look at trees, you see all these different trees. And some of them are bent and some of them are straight. Some of them are evergreens and some of them are whatever. And you look at the tree and you allow it. You see why it is the way it is. You sort of understand that it didn't get enough light, so it turned that way. And you don't get all emotional about it. You just allow it. You appreciate the tree. The minute you get near humans, you lose all that. And you constantly are saying, you're to this or I'm to this. That judging mind comes in. And so I practice turning people into trees which means appreciating them just the way they are. So, um, and I will share with you that uh, we, had those re we had that quote printed into a bookmark for our 50th anniversary. And we have, if you're interested, we have those out at our table uh, for you to, to take. We also have, we brought some Herbs today, I see some people have picked them up, but feel free while the supplies last to grab an herb if you would like. And the last thing that's out there you might find interest in, but there's a man, some of you probably know, Richard Louvre, who wrote a book, The Last Child in the Wilderness. And in that book, he uh, coined the expression nature deficit disorder, but he talks about uh, the absence of the connection with nature, particularly young children, and then it now, now it's extending into adults, and the amount of the hours and hours of screen time that these children have, and the tiny fractions amount of time they have in unstructured play outside. So he's written a book about it, and tremendous amount of research that supports this idea that us human beings, we're first and foremost a product, we are first and foremost natural beings, more than anything else, and we are connected um, to this earth. And Richard, um, and, and, and we can find wellness and health and healing and happiness and joy in nature, and, and, it, and we're losing that. And Richard is starting a, a, you know, a revolution to create a, create a society where we understand and get ourselves back and reconnected with nature. So he wrote in his book the most beautiful vision of the future of what, of what the the future society and nation looks like of people and government and business, et cetera, that are connected with nature. And I, um, we have a, a reprint of it and a little piece out in front. It's called Imagine a World. 
So feel free to help yourself to that as well. And um, it's always nice to be here. There were, uh, the last couple of years, there were s some high school students from, and they're here from Olathe. All right, well, welcome. I'm glad, glad to have you. I hope you choose, hope you choose our industry. <laughs>